Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan, and today we are going to be predicting Samurai Japan's roster at the upcoming 2024 Premier 12 this November. The tournament will be held in Mexico, Japan, and Taiwan. The Super Round, as always, though, will be at Tokyo Dome. I'll be there for sure. And with any international tournament like this, Japan is obviously expected to win it all. Anything short of that is a failure. So I actually did a roster prediction video like this right around this same time last year. Uh, and now with the first half of this current MPB season in the books and the actual tournament only four months away, I thought it would be quite productive to do another roster prediction. So um, what I have here is all the players who have been on Samurai Japan in the last three major tournaments, plus just other candidates who I thought would uh, fit into the Premier 12 team. Um, and just so everybody understands, like, this uh, is going to be 28-man rosters, so or at least that's what it was last time, so I am expecting that to be the case uh, in 2024. No players on MLB 40-mans will be eligible, um, which doesn't really apply to Japan anyway, but it will matter for some of their opponents. Uh, and Japan's manager is Hirokazu Ibata. This is going to be tournament number three for him on the senior national team since taking over for Hideki Kuriyama. He took first place at the Asia Pro Baseball Championship this past November, uh, and then he won both games against Team Europe in March. So basically flawless so far for him, uh, and we are starting to see some of his roster building uh, construction you know tendencies he's quite open-minded a uh, bit more like Kuriyama in that sense in terms of like you know going um, to to feel comfortable picking uh, young up-and-comers as opposed to someone like Atsunori Inaba who I always thought was a bit more rigid you know always going with kind of the obvious established veterans um, Inaba isn't like that. He's even selected college players for the senior team, and he says he will do it again if he feels they belong. So I think that's very merit-based um, and definitely something we should uh, take into account. But for starters here, I think we can go with the guys who I would consider to be pretty much locks, uh, barring injury. So number one is going to be Kensuke Kondo in the outfield, the number one position player in MPB far and away at this point. I mean, 1,000 OPS in a league where the average OPS is in the low 600s. No one else is even close to him. And you add the fact that he's an, he's an elite defender in left field. So Kondo is a must-have. Uh, and then on the infield, you got Munetaka Murakami and Kazuma Okamoto. You know, two big bashers in Tokyo. They've been there, done that. 30 to 40 homers every single year. Um, they were the corner infield duo for the WBC team, and I would very much expect them to be locking it down again here for the Premier 12 team, um, if they're serious about winning it, of course. And speaking of Munetaka Murakami, this video is sponsored by the Core Energy Belt. Did you know that the Core Energy Belt is worn by over 80% of MPB players, making it the most popular belt in the league? Global superstars like Muki Betts, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and Munetaka Murakami all choose the Core Energy Belt because it provides pressure around the lower back and core, hence the name, to support fast movements like swinging and throwing. It was actually designed by former MLB pitcher Kenshin Kawakami to help overcome a lower back injury, and you can get your own hands on a baseball or golf belt too. Just click the link in the description below and enter code YAKUCOSMO for 15% off. And guess what? They have free shipping in the US and offer a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. So if you try it and you don't like it, just return it. But I'll tell you what, from my experience trying the belt, I think you're going to like it. I'm so happy they sent me one. But don't forget discount code YAKUCOSMO for 15% off. Thank you to Core Energy Belt for sponsoring this video. So um, that's already three out of, out of the 28 players covered. But really, I do think that's where the 100% like guaranteed selections end. Uh, like there are guys I would expect to, they, to be there with like pretty high certainty, 80 to 90%, but you just never know. Um, there is always the possibility with some of the bigger superstars that they might skip the tournament. We'll get into that with Roki Sasaki. Um, or maybe, you know, Japan just decides, hey, we can win this thing without them, so let's give someone else a shot. But typically speaking, the Premier 12, they're going to put out uh, the best team possible. Now, uh, looking at the pitchers here, um, Hiroya Miyagi has to be the top choice. You know, he has been the best starter in MPB this season on an inning-by-inning -inning basis. Uh, his breaking balls are 
just absolutely wicked. You know, that, that slider changeup combo he has, the looping Ethis curveball. Uh, and he's also increased his fastball velo by a couple of ticks this year from, you know, 89-91 before. Now he's up more to like 92-94 and even more in the tank. He can, he can run it up to 95-96 sometimes. So really, I think Miyagi has become the most well-rounded, complete pitcher in the league. He is going to be the ace of this team. Um, and, you know, you might be thinking, well, what about, what about Roki Sasaki? Uh, I'm not including Roki Sasaki for, the, for this team because there's just too many unknowns for me. Like, one, is he healthy? Two, does he get posted to MLB? Three, does he even want to play in this tournament? And four, like, do they even need him? Like, I know Inaba wants to have him. He said that he's going to invite him to this tournament. But, um, like, even if he was only giving, you know, 60, 60% effort, like, their opponents aren't going to stand a chance against him. And, and really, realistically speaking, if he's going out there throwing... 99 to 102 which is obviously capable of then it's not even going to be fair right um and, and i'm just not very confident that roki is going to participate i think there's definitely a chance um but that's why i think miyagi who's honestly one of his best friends i think he's the ace of this team um when, when you don't have sasaki and the mlb guys but right behind miyagi uh you do have a ton of elite options like you know, say what you will about the dead balls. It's obviously killed a lot of the action and excitement on the offensive side of things. Uh, it's made a lot of like pitch to contact guys like, you know, inflate their numbers a lot. But there are a lot of studs out there who would be, you know, cream of the crop pitchers, regardless of what kind of balls they're using. And, you know, those are the guys who strike everyone out, right? So to me, Tatsuya Imai is at the very top of my list. His fastball is sitting 95 miles per hour this year. Uh, he has run it all the way up to 99, and he's fully embraced this kind of two-pitch approach, just pounding fastballs and sliders like 90% of the time at this point, and he dominates with that combo. So to me, Imai is a must-have on this team. He can be wild at times, yes, but he's improved the command overall this season. This is the first time he's ever had a, a walk rate below 10%, so that's an accomplishment. Um, and you know, he, he's probably the best power pitcher that MPB has to offer outside of Roki Sasaki and, and Shinpeite Yamashita, who I would have considered to be almost a lock um, for this team before the season. But he's really struggled lately. Bit of a sophomore slump for him. Gaudy stuff, you know, ridiculous potential. Pretty much an unprecedented level for a young pitcher um, in, in Japan. Like, apart from, you know, Otani and Roki, obviously... Um, even like Shintaro Fujinami, like Shumbeta Yamashita is special. But right now, he's not throwing strikes. And if you can't throw strikes, you just can't get consistent results. Uh, so I would love to see him on this team, but he needs to rebound big time in the second half. Um, or else, you know, I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, it, it's not impossible that he gets selected, even if, you know, he has a bad regular season because he is just that special. You could just throw him in the bullpen, tell him to go max effort, throw 99 every pitch um, if they really wanted to. But for now, you know, I'm going to say he, he misses out on the team because he's having a, a bad year. Um, but the other guy who won Rookie of the Year last season, that's Shoki Murakami. He's a guy that I expect to, to be on the team for sure. Um, he hasn't been quite as dominant as he was in 2023, but still, like, he is giving you length every time out. He's got the pinpoint command. He's got the deep arsenal. Great feel for all his, his secondaries. Um, and he can pitch the contact effectively. So, you know, he's quite efficient with his pitch counts, but he can also get you a strikeout if you really need it um, in, in a big spot. So I believe Shoki is is a top two to three starter in MPB right now. To me, he goes Roki, then Miyagi, and, and Shoki's right there with them. Uh, he's not afraid to throw up in the zone either. So yeah, Shoki Murakami, I'm including for sure. Uh, and the same goes for his teammate, actually. Um, Hiroto Saiki. He has been very good in the past, uh, but, he, but to me, he was missing that extra oomph. Like, he's had co control problems, and that kind of prevented him from going deep into games consistently. Only two true pitches, so he was a bit one-dimensional, too fastball-reliant for my liking. But now, he's really worked on that slider, or cutter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I, I think it just couples really well with, with the fastball and the fourth ball. It's a unique look. So now he has three legit out pitches, he throws hard, and I do think he's hungry for a chance on the national team after allowing that home run to Shohei Otani from one knee in the exhibition game before the WBC last year, uh, if people recall. I think he really wants to go out there and prove he's one of the best young arms in Japan. And right now he has an ERA in the low ones. So, you know, just churning out quality starts every single time out. Uh, you can expect a little bit of regression, but yeah, he's having a fantastic season. Gotta, gotta include him. 
So now you got four starters. Uh, and I think number five can be a bunch of different guys, honestly. A ton of options here. Shosei Togo for the Giants. He's a true workhorse. You know, he was instrumental for, for Japan in the finals against USA last year. Had two innings uh, as a follower for Shota Imanaga. Um, and then there is Hiroto Takahashi, who stuff-wise, I definitely think is up there with the best of the best. He is pitching to contact a little bit more this year. I think he's doing that on purpose. He doesn't have that crazy 30% K rate like he did uh, when he was a rookie uh, a little while back. But, you know, he, he can still throw in the mid to high 90s. He still has that nasty split finger, um, which is not only one of the best whiff pitches, but it's also one of the best ground ball pitches in the league. So, you know, even if he doesn't get a whiff on it, he, he's getting something on the ground, uh, which prevents damage, obviously. Uh, and, and he's throwing his cutter a lot more this year as well. So, you know, I, I think those can basically be your five starters for the initial pool stage. There's six teams in their pool, so five games in total. And you can feel you can, you can feel pretty damn good about throwing out Miyagi, Imai, Murakami, Saiki, and Takahashi. And obviously, that, it could be even better if if he had Roki and if Shinpeita was at his best right now. Um, But now, I, I also do want to include Chosei Togo. I think you have to include Chosei Togo because... You know, he can obviously start. Um, he's proven that, you know, with, with the Giants, that he can be one of the best workhorses in the league. He knows how to be be an efficient pitcher uh, and give you 175 innings every single year. But he can be a follower like he did during the WBC. And I would actually prefer that because, um, you know, he can't just grind through games, but he, he can have a bit of a home run problem. Um, but if you just let him max effort for two innings or, st- or so, you know, instead of throwing like 90, 91, he can run it up to 94, 95. You don't overexpose him to the home run threat as much. Um, and, and I think that kind of maximizes Togo's value. And then another guy I would love to see on this team is Kaima Tyra for the Seibu Lions. You know, we call him King Kaima here on this channel. He is just so cerebral, man. Like he understands the art of pitching on a fundamental level so deeply you know, he's always talking about tunneling and vertical approach angle because he's short, so he tries to leverage that, climbing the ladder. Kaimataira, he's strong, he's smart, he has experience now as both a starter and reliever, so he's pretty much everything you want. He does have MLB aspirations as well. Uh, only problem is he has been hurt for most of this year, so so he should be back sooner than later, but um, he, he did decline to participate in the WBC last year, which was because he was converting to a starter at the time, so he wanted to focus on that. Um, he, he was selected to the Europe series in March, pitched pretty well. Um, and I think he would be happy to pitch in the Premier 12, especially since he's not going to have too many innings under his belt this year due to the injury. Um, and you can obviously deploy him in any role, but to me, unleashing him in the, in the late innings, like, like he used to do a couple years ago, uh, when he, when he can throw mid to upper nineties fastball, plus all the great secondaries, which I think he's been able to refine very, very well as a starter. Uh, the fork ball, the sweeper, plus the new gyro slider. I think that's going to play super well. So that's seven pitchers now. Um, I think the magic number I'm looking for is probably 14. You could go with 13 or 15, obviously, but I just want to make it even with the position players. So 14 and 14 for 28. Um, and now things do get difficult because you could just keep adding more quality starters. Like Japan has a ton of quality starting pitchers who can go deep into games, but you know, at a tournament like this, that's not really what you what you need, right? Because you're just going to be passing the baton the whole time. So you probably want to look at some specialists or, or power relievers. And so right off the bat, when it comes to guys to just throw out of the bullpen um, and get you guaranteed outs, Roji Kuribayashi of the Carp, he's been lights out this year. He's been pretty much lights out every year of his career going back to 2021. Um, only given up two runs all season, ridiculous strikeout numbers. I mean, he's a K rate pretty close to 40%. And apart from that short stretch early on in 2023, when he was still recovering from his little WBC injury, um, and he wasn't quite pitching like himself, he has been the best Japanese closer in the league since 2021, essentially. Like I say, best Japanese closer because Raido Martinez exists, but still like Kuribayashi is right up there with him. I can go back and forth on those two. And, you know, if you have a lead going into the ninth, then then pretty much uh, game over. Just throw out Kuribayashi. Um, now, another guy I think is is kind of underrated uh, because the Dragons are, are a mess of a team, but they have quite a good bullpen, so it's easy to overlook a few of the people they have in there. Um, but Shinya Matsuyama. Like, when I think gaudy relievers right now, I think Shinya Matsuyama. Uh, his teammate, Tatsuya Shimizu, uh, is also filthy. He's been on the national team before, but I like Matsuyama more personally. He throws harder. He has that effectively wildness to him 
Uh, he is a pure two pitch guy, fastball, forkball, try and hit it, and you can't, even if you know if it, it's coming. Um, he, he actually did blow a few games early in the season, but ever since then, he has been, I think, literally perfect. Like maybe he's given up one or two runs since March, uh, but otherwise it's all zeros. So Matsuyama, he, he brings a, a rare level of explosiveness to the table because he has a little bit of funk to him, but he throws really hard, hides the ball well. You know, if you're facing a team like Chinese Taipei, you know, who have kind of very quality contact hitters, you throw you throw on Matsuyama. He's the type of pitcher you just don't see very often, if at all, in the CPBL. So I think he could be a great weapon for them. Um, and and you know, now that I think about it, I, I just came across Taisei's face. I forgot about Taisei for the Giants just because he's missed so much time the last two seasons. Um, and he hasn't really been able to settle down in that closer role that he's destined for. If he was healthy, I think he would already be like, you know, up there with Kuribayashi and Martinez for the consensus best closers in MPB. And when he's healthy, he has been. But again, he just he's missed so much time. Uh, he was on the WBC team, got that huge double play um, against Goldschmidt, was it, in the seventh inning of the finals. And I always feel like Taisei is a guy that he, he's got the dog in him. You know, he just seems to have this cold calm closer mentality um and when he's healthy he can throw triple digits he has touched 100 this year and even his average velo is like 97 98 so he's pretty nutty um i I have to include him if he's healthy and you know now that i think about it like man this is a mega bullpen already like even if even without tyra who you know he he can kind of swing both ways it's like matsuyama kuribayashi taisei wow that is that is scary so i think that's 10 pitchers now um, nine righties and, and just Miyagi as the lefty. So uh, we do need to add more southpaws here. Um, Inaba selected Chihiro Sumida of the Lions and Haruka Nemoto of the Fighters two tournaments in a row at this point. So I think he does have a preference for those kind of... I don't even know if they're that similar stylistically, but, you know, Nemoto is a big slider guy. Sumida is more of a curveball changeup. But, you know, they're, they're both sort of like finesse pitchers, but guys that ha- have the higher whiff rates, like neither of them throw particularly hard high 80s, low 90s maybe, but they get strikeouts. Um, And I guess the same applies to Takama Kirishiki of the Tigers. Um, He throws a little bit harder, but again, it's like big slider guy. Now, you know, Nemoto, he's been on the farm for most of this year with the fighters, so I don't expect him to be on the team, but Kirishiki and Sumida are definitely options. Um, Sumida actually threw an immaculate inning against against Team Europe, so he definitely has it in him. and, you know, he's been in pretty good form the past month of the season. Had a bit of a tough start, but he's been really good lately. Uh, always a guy that I've liked, so I'm going to go with him, actually. Um, and then I also want Takahisa Hayakawa. Takahisa Hayakawa looks like a whole new man this season. Like, he was kind of starting to enter bust territory, dare I say it, you know, these past couple of years because he hadn't quite delivered on that status of being the best prospect or one of the best prospects of that stacked 2020 draft class. But he was really great for Japan against Australia last November. I think he was like perfect through five or six innings, actually. And then he went to Perth to play winter ball, dominated there as well. And now in 2024 with with Rakuten, he is killing it. Underlying numbers are all up across the board. And and he is still a big fly ball guy. So the home run threat is always there, Uh, especially if they use a more lively ball. Like I'm not sure what the Premier 12 is going to use. Um, but he's just been too good this season not to include. Like, if you look at just, like, expected fielding independent pitching, he is, like, top five in the league right now. So that gives us, um, a total of 12. We have room for, for two more guys. And, you know, it's getting really, really tough because there's still so many guys that you want to include. Um, I look at a guy like Daichi Ishii for Hanshin. He's been lights out since, I think, 2022. Um, smaller sample size, but really taking it to a whole new level this season with like a 40% strikeout rate and only a handful of walks. He is more of a fly ball guy, but just so filthy. And he must get like crazy ride on his fastball, in my opinion, because he gets so many whiffs on that pitch. Um, and then plus breaking balls as well. The slider, the fork, he has this sort of change up sinker thing um, that he throws exclusively against lefties, really helps him with his splits. Um, so... I, I kind of really want to include Ishii because he has been, you know, one of the two or three best relief pitchers in MPB this year. Um, and, you know, there there you could go with a lot more starters. There's a lot of more deserving starters here, like Atsuki Taneichi. Um, he was on the team in, in March. So was Masato Morishita. Uh, Hiromi Ito was on the WBC team. You could definitely go with, with one or two of them. 
Um, but I think the team does typically like to have like a good amount of pure relief options in there. You know, guys who are already used to like coming out of the pen in a high pressure spot, getting that one or two outs that they need. Um, so we'll go with Ishii. There's room for him. Um, and then I think we need one more reliever here to make it 14. Like I, again, I, I like Tane Ichi a lot. I, I like Kojiro Yoshimura with the Swallows a lot, but I think it has to be another reliever. Um, so Taro Shimauchi, power righty for the Carp. Um, there's his teammate as well, Takami Kurohara, who's a former first rounder, kind of really, you know, discovering himself in the bullpen this year. He kills lefties like a super high strikeout rate. Um, there's also Shinsuke Sato, who's been on the team before. I already said Tatsuya Shimizu earlier. There's Kazuto Taguchi, uh, Swallow's closer, who was there as an overage player in the Asia Championship last year because he does have the experience at the international level and he's quite versatile in role. Uh, can be a lefty specialist, can be a closer. He's been a starter in the past. He's been a long man. Um, but, you know, when, when I was putting, like, th- this list of players together, the guy that kept catching my eye was Yumeto Kanemaru, the top prospect uh, right now at Kansai University. He was there in March against Team Europe. He threw uh, two scoreless innings there with four Ks. And then, you know, this spring, he threw something just absolutely ridiculous. It was like 40 straight scoreless innings with 50-plus strikeouts, only like two or three walks um, in college. And so I do expect him to be the most contested player in the MPB draft this October. And what a cool way to introduce him to fans of, you know, whatever new MPB team he ends up with, um, for him to pitch for Samurai Japan at the Premier 12 just weeks after being drafted. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, And Inaba is probably open to doing something like that for sure. He already saw firsthand how much potential Kanemaru has. So, yeah, let's go with him. And and there you go. Those are our 14 arms right now. Okay, let's move on to the hitters. Uh, We already have three. So that means we can pick 11 more. Um, And typically they do carry three catchers at a tournament like this, even if they only really use two. Um, And the catching situation for the Samurai right now, a little bit difficult to predict because they're in kind of this transition period. The old guard of Takia Kai, Yuhei Nakamura, uh, you go before that, Tsubasa Aizawa, Seiji Kobayashi, they're on their way out. Takumi Oshiro also... Um, He's on the older side of things. I still think he's elite, so I wish he would get more love both on his own team and on, you know, the national level, but I don't really see that happening, unfortunately. Um, So what Inaba ended up doing at the Asia Championship was he went with Yuto Koga for the Lions, who I kind of see as a baby Kai. Like, he's a bad framer with a strong arm. Granted, Kai is an elite blocker. Koga still has a lot of work to do on that front. And then Shogo Sakakura for Hiroshima was also there as an overage player. And I think when Sakakura is right, he's a pretty obvious choice. He can hit for average, he can hit for power, he can play first and third base as well. Totally fine behind the plate, so you have a little bit of everything there with Sakakura. But he's having a down year so far in 2024, so I'm just not exactly sure right now. But I feel like I believe in his raw talent enough. He's still young, 25, 26 or something. Um, and I'm going to bank on a strong finish to the season and, and go with Sakakura as one of our three catchers. But admittedly, I'm not that confident in him right now. And then I do think Yuda Yamamoto for DNA will be there. Yamamoto is just a stud behind the dish. Like, he's still super young. Um, and he was there alongside Koga, if I'm not mistaken, at the Europe Series in March. Um, and Yamamoto, is he's not only one of the best up-and-coming defenders, plus-plus framer, controls the running game well, calls a good game, but he can also hit. Just the bat-to-ball skills there are are excellent, and I feel like that's something that the DNA coaches must stress a lot because for these past couple of years, their entire team has had like a 2-3% to better K rate than any other team. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's that they have, you know, these guys like Maki and Miyazaki and, and uh, Yamamoto who just don't strike out, so that lowers it uh, for the whole team, but... Um, they, they also have top prospect Shio Matsuo in the minors. He's a sub-10% K-rate guy. So imagine a tandem of Matsuo and Yamamoto in 2025. That's going to be crazy for the Bay Stars. But yeah, right now I definitely think Yamamoto deserves to be there. He should honestly be the starter. Um, and then, you know, third string guy. I don't really know why Tomiya Mori doesn't get love uh, because he is the best catcher in Japan straight up. He could easily be the starter. Um, and at his best, he can even lead the league in hitting. So it's like, he provides so much value at a premium position like that, but he just has this kind of bad reputation defensively, which I don't think is entirely true. Like, 
You look at things like DRS, and he's perfectly fine. He's not elite, but he's average to a little above average even. But I, he just doesn't seem to get that much consideration on the on the international stage. Like, uh, he did get invited to the WBC. He had to decline at that point because he had just signed with Oryx and wanted to get to know the new staff better. But even before that, like the Olympics or 2019 Premier 12, he wasn't there. So I'm just going to assume he's not selected this time either. And instead, I will go with um, a different lefty hitter, Yua Tamiya of the Fighters, who is having a breakout season right now. Like, he was so mid, even like outright bad at times on the farm. He had very little prospect pedigree whatsoever. Um, but he took the starting catcher job this year and he's run with it. Top five in OPS right now, which is just crazy. Like just absolutely coming out of nowhere. And he has utility value because he can technically play a bunch of other positions as well. Strong arm. So I could I could totally see Tamiya on this team. And I would give you a, a really nice young core of Yamamoto, Sakakura, Tamiya, um, and if they really wanted an, an experienced veteran to lead them, then you look at, you know, Takia Kai again or Yuhei Nakamura, possibly even like a Kenya Wakatsuki. Um, but I do feel like Inaba is a bit more invest, invested in this youth movement right now. Uh, and this can kind of be a tryout for those guys on the WBC team in a way too. All right. Now we have six position players down. We have eight to go. And we do have to consider that there are typically more infielders than outfielders on this team. Uh, so I guess that's like six or seven infielders and then four or five outfielders total. We already have Murakami and Okamoto on the corner. So now we need some um, middle infielders. And, you know, Shugo Maki is pretty obvious at second base. Like, you know, he's basically a lock. I should have included him as a lock now that, now that I think about it at the beginning. Tetsuro Yamada was still the main guy at the WBC, but Maki was right behind him. He had a couple of home runs in the tournament. Uh, and he's just such a consistent hitter. You know, he's your typical 300 to 3100 guy. Defense, still a work in progress at second. Yes, he's probably better suited for first, but he's made improvements since his rookie season for sure. He makes some really nice plays there sometimes. Um, so, you know, you might feel better defensively with a guy like Takumi Nakano or Naoki Yoshikawa there, but the offensive value, you know, the combination he brings of, of contact and power, uh, he's a great, you know, clubhouse presence. Go ahead and stick Maki anywhere from like number two to number six in the lineup. And, and yeah, you feel amazing. So got to have Maki. Um, and then for shortstop, things get pretty interesting because the safe pick is always going to be Sosuke Genda for the Lions. If you want stability with the glove, you know, you go with the gold glover. Um, you know, he was obviously very special for, for the WBC, even with a broken pinky. But I would not be shocked if they go with someone else, especially because Genda will be what? 33-34 for the 2026 WBC, so you might want to give a younger guy a chance um, to prepare them for the WBC. Not that anything really prepares you for the WBC, but you'd rather have you know a little bit of experience at the Premier 12 than not have any um, at the national level, right? So, you know, I think you're looking at names like Kotaro Koribayashi for Oryx, Hideki Nagaoka for the Swallows, he's having a great year. Takuma Nakano can play both second and short. Um, Atsuki Tomosugi is having a breakout for the Marines. Kenta Imamiya for the Hawks, he's great, but he is a little old as well, so probably not, um, you know, not his time anymore. Makoto Kadawaki of the Giants won MVP of the Asia Championship last year because he had a walk-off in the finals, but he's had some ups and downs this season, bit of a sophomore slump, at least at the plate. Still an elite defender, you know, special athlete, but the bat is a huge question mark. Um, and then there's Rui Muneyama, the, the top position player prospect of this year's draft, a uh, major university product, a guy that has the potential, I think, to be a generational talent for sure, the Takashi Toritani type. Um, but he's been hurt for most of spring, actually got hurt practicing with Samurai Japan in March, ironically, and his stock has taken a bit of a hit. So, you know, if he has a great fall season, maybe you consider bringing him along for the ride. He'd probably be on the bench. You might give him one or two starts. Um, but Inaba also seems to like Kaito Kozono for the carp. Uh, Kozono is a free swinger. You know, he's he's fast, but he's a below average defender, I think. Um, elite back to ball skills, though, for sure. And then he has some pop to go with it. So an interesting player. But I personally lean t towards uh, Kotaro Koribayashi. He's the best bat here for sure. Um, he is like, you know, a, he's a solidified plus bat at this point in time. Um, and he's only getting better with it. Uh, so, um, you know, he doesn't have that much range defensively, which can be an issue. The arm is good, but the range is just very iffy. So an infield of Okamoto, Maki, Kuribayashi, Murakami, 
that would be pretty bad defensively like you're getting away from that kind of traditional Japanese brand at that point if you punt on infield defense that hard but that doesn't mean we can't include him I do think we should include Kuribayashi he can also play third uh, and so maybe what you do is you bring Genda and Kuribayashi and they can split time so if Kuribayashi ends up being exposed defensively then you can go with Genda uh, but in maybe lower pressure games let Kuribayashi get his shot and you know, I definitely think Kuribayashi could be the WBC shortstop um, if he just gets a little bit better, like 10% better defensively. So now we have uh, five guys on the infield. We have our starters, and we can probably go with like one more corner infielder type, a guy you can maybe use as a pinch hitter off, off the bench um, with power. And if you asked me before the season, that would have been Teruaki Sato 100%, you know, with his crazy raw power. He went to driveline over the winter. I thought he was poised for a huge season, season but he's been struggling. Um, granted, he did have a big second half last year, so I wouldn't count him out yet. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking this should actually be Roya Kurihara. Um, you know, he had the ACL tear, which you know, you know, kept him out for a bit, and then you know, it took him a while to find his stride again. He was not good last year, but he has been one of the best hitters in MPB in 2024, especially if you remove like the first two to three weeks when he was still um, figuring it out, like. He is going supernova. I think he's number two in MPB in war right now, not to mention plus defender at third. He has experience in the outfield. He came up as a catcher, so he can be your emergency fourth string catcher. And he was on the Olympic team as a bench player before. Um, I think he had like a pinch bunt back then in 2021. So he checks all the boxes. He's breaking out. He's still quite young. He has experience on the team already. So let's go with Roya Kurihara. And then finishing up with the outfield, we already have Kensuke Kondo, the superstar, in left field. Um, I think right field is pretty damn easy as well. Give me Chusei Manami every single day of the week. The best hose in the world. Comes up clutch all the time. He is built for the spotlight. Um, and then center field, I think, is probably Koji Chikamoto, right? Like, Chikamoto hasn't had much national team opportunity, even though he's been an MVP caliber player for a long time now. I think he makes great adjustments even, like with dead balls. Uh, he's learned to kind of just just pull it a lot, uh, almost Nolan Arenado style. So um, he he hits for for more power than you would expect out of his skill set. And the concerns that people have had about him, like being bad against high velo, that's not really a concern at the Premier Twelve. That's more of a WBC thing. So Chikamoto, I think he should be the starting center fielder. It could also be Ukio Shuto, elite defender there, but you probably want him off the bench as always, you know, for the elite speed. Everyone knows him now as the guy that zoomed around the bases, pinch running for Masataka Yoshida in that ninth inning against Mexico for the Murakami walk-off, right? So that gives us 13 position players. Uh, we do have room for one more outfielder. You know, it's, it's a tough choice here because um, I want to go with kind of a power slugger, you know, like Seiya Hosokawa, but he's just such a bad defender. I'm not sure he, he brings enough to the table. Um, he would be a pure DH at the tournament, and, and yeah, he can got, he can go off and he can hit like three or four homers for you, but um, he does have swing and miss in the bat, so he could just kind of be nothing for the whole tournament. Yasutaka Shiomi would usually be here, but he's hurt again, unfortunately. That's why he missed the WBC as well. Otherwise, he probably would have been the top choice once Seiya Suzuki got hurt. Um, but I, I kind of feel like the perfect mix here of power, defense, and potential like wanting to invest in future potential is with Shota Marista of the Tigers. He was there last year as well. Um, has a great swing, big power when he runs into one. Um, he can play all three outfields. He's not rating that well defensively this year, but he did last year. Um, and I think like Marista is one adjustment away from breaking out and being a you know perennial 20 to 30 homer type hitter. Um, there's not going to be room for him at the WBC, um, but I, I think the Premier 12 would be perfect for him. You could definitely carve out a role. So there you go. Those are my 28 predicted players for Samurai Japan at the Premier 12 this November. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, once the actual roster is announced in fall, we'll definitely take a look at it and break it down. But thank you all for watching. Make sure to support me on Patreon at Baseball Cosmo. Uh, follow me on X at Yaku Cosmo. Check out my work on Japanball.com, the World Baseball Network, and Sports Look. And like and subscribe here on YouTube for more MPB content in English.